Okay, let's watch this first trade. So on my primary trading view chart, I have a bounce level there, so I'm taking this as a trade. I had additional bounce levels, but this is really where I wanted to be long, expecting price to move that 20 points that you see that I marked above. taking a little heat. I'm like, okay, I've got the other bounce levels underneath here. I really want to be long. And let me add here at this bounce level. And apparently I changed my mind, <laughs> which is fine. And I'm like, no, if you get there, I want there. So I picked the greediest bounce level that was on my primary trading view chart. I'm like, okay, I will add there. My out would be under where my stop is, and that's okay. Welcome to trading. Sometimes we take losses. And you just have to be patient. So this down move that we see there on that big blue candle took out two daily lows and bounced off a daily fair value gap. Got bought up tremendously starting the ladder up. So it took all the liquidity to the south, much like in this morning's AM briefing. So I encourage you to go watch the AM briefing. So we took all that liquidity to the south and just felt that because of the reaction and the laddering, we're going to go take the liquidity to the north. And sometimes you just stay in the trade. You just wait, you be patient. Sometimes it goes against you. And on my primary chart, we have our strong levels, which really help us. This is my top step chart. All right, come on, get up. My leverage metric says I can trade six contracts. So as long as I'm trading no more than six contracts, I am staying within my leverage metrics. I rarely enter all six at the same level. I don't mind spreading them out. I'm trading the wings of the bounce range. If I really want to be in it, I'm going to trade the front edge and then have my remainder contracts at the back edge. And then it makes my average price right in the middle and I'm still within my leverage metrics. Took off the add on here. Why? It's bouncing off one of the other levels. Like I said, I put that entry at the greediest bounce level and price did not get there. So there's no sense in adding additional risk. Let's just stay in our original trade here. I'm pretty aggressive at taking the gift of break even when I need to. I'm really wanting to be long here and give this trade every opportunity to work out. Come on, get up there. At some point in this, I adjust the screen up where we can see the time. So we obviously had the PPI and now we're waiting for Powell. And every minute that gets closer to Powell, the greater the risk of this trade is. And so that is something I'm eyeing at the time. Keep in mind of where we're at on the clock. So once again, we're having evidence of laddering up after we took two pools of liquidity to the south. I want to be in the trade. We have two daily highs up there about 63, 64. As we talked about in the AM briefing, it seems to be the target. Come on, push it up. There we go. Come on, pop it. At least go get the overnight high liquidity, right? 
So here I'm going to hit sell and I'm going to take a contract off. And there we go. I now have two contracts remaining. Very nice, very nice. And so now I'm moving that one point in the profit per contract. And I go, no, here's what I want to do. Let's sell one contract there. It would automatically reduce my remaining contracts to one if it gets me out. So here it is about to take the overnight high pool of liquidity. And what's it most likely going to do? Pull back in. So we got to wait. See what happens. Maybe it pops in and keeps going to the bigger pools of liquidity to the north. I don't know what exactly it's going to do. So there it is. It took the overnight high liquidity. And if it pulls back to there, that's okay. Come on, big white candle, get up there. All right, so if it, not if, it's going to hit my market, my stop market sell here, and then it's gonna reduce my number of contracts to one. So my thought here is it takes off this contract in the profit. I'll use that profit to finance this runner at a small loss. Why? Because I feel like I'm with trend and I want to give it every opportunity to get up there and get those two daily highs. So if it gets me out of this contract, Initially, I want to allow it to finance my runner. So let's say this makes one point. Well, then I can move my runner stop to minus one point. And if you're in my group, we discussed that this morning at the end of Zoom. If you aren't in my group, we cover that thoroughly in flight school at the Core Strategy Academy. Okay, so got me out. I now have one contract remaining. I'm adjusting that stop to minus one point. And then what I decide to do here is I now have a new bounce level below me. I like, okay, get me out at break even. And if price pulls in a little further, let's go long again with three contracts. I'm okay with that. Price is pretty slow here, and I've sped this up 3x, guys. <laughs> this is 3x speed. Just price was getting slow before Powell's was getting to the stage. Workout. So the market's opening in four minutes. I mean,
Come on, come on. What are you going to do? So yeah, the market's about to open. It's a difficult time to be in a trade. I'm like, oh, well, maybe it'll shoot straight up. <laughs> if not, get me out of break even. We'll reset. If it pushes much further down, those are the two locations I want to go long. Those are where I have bounce levels on my primary trading view chart. And I was like, okay, it's not going to push down on the opening candle. So I might as well remove that from my chart. Just stay in this one trade at break even. I'm already long. Let's just stick with it. And remember, it already took the overnight high liquidity. So it really needs a strong push to get to those two daily highs up there. You know, let's lock in one point here. Bigger picture. Come on, get up there. And out. All right, let's look at this trade. I turned on my recording a little late. So once again, I'm wanting to be long. The market's opened and I have set out four orders and I've spread them out. Remember, I can trade up to six contracts. It got me into one and barely touched the second one, but didn't get me in. Why did it bounce right there? That's where I have a bounce level on my other chart. I wanted to be in early, so I put the first contract there because I want to be long. I'm like, okay, I'm going to front run it, and then I'm going to move these to the other bounce levels. Now I'm adjusting them to even greedier bounce levels. All within my leverage metrics. And now we're going up in the profit, and I'm like, that's it. I'm going to put my stop one tick behind where that went. Now I'm going to put my stop at profit it doesn't need to revisit this area if it's going to go up doesn't need to do it and so that's why my stop is at break even we'll see what happens here i only have one contract there's two things that are the hardest to manage that's over leverage and one contract I don't have the ability to peel contracts off here to finance the runner. This is my runner. This is my trade. Now, multiple people in our group took this. I talked about that entry before it got there and, and told them where I was going to go long. Multiple people took this long and did very well today. And for me, this was my primary trade. This is the one that went 10 points. Hoping it would go the 20, but that did not happen. I locked in 10 points, as you will see here. Some of my traders got out at 12 points, so they did a little better than me, which is great. We're all cheering for each other. We're all on the same team. Together, we trade better. Roger missed his entry by one tick. Now, in my cash account, I was a little greedier. Um, I was at the lower bounce levels and it didn't get me in. But for my top step account, I was a little greedy. I was not as greedy for my initial contract. So here I am locking in 50% of the distance, locking in a five pointer. And I said, okay, if it gets to, it gets above the 10 points, I'm going to lock in 10 points, hoping it would continue. But if it gets me out at 10 points, I'm just as happy. That's fine with me. Get out and move on with my day. If I can teach you to make 10 points a day, consistently every day, you will love trading. 
it's really nice when you get a 10 pointer it's a great feeling and the levels bounce and on tuesdays which is a trend day typically um getting the 10 points is pretty easy one of my newer members james today had two um 10 pointers three of them make a hat trick and we have a group inside of our discord where we celebrate hat tricks so who knows maybe james will get a hat trick today i'm pulling for you buddy and it's gonna come get me because i remember <laughs> Move that to capture the 20. I'm either going to make 10 points or 20 points. And that's all I make. 